Hi, yep. Uh, so I'm Aaron. Uh, I work on the cloud native uh, resource management team, as does Atanas. Uh, I've also been working on this uh, with Andrew Brown, who's probably also pretty well known here already, uh, who's uh, working in the SADG group. Uh, so just the agenda, we're going to quickly just cover kind of the motivation of why you'd actually want GPU offload in the WASM ecosystem. Uh, we'll quickly just cover some of the potential offload APIs. The two main ones that we'll focus on are just WASI NN and WASI, or WASI G Web GPU. And then we'll just cover some of the uh, AI frameworks with um, offload backends. And afterwards, we'll kind of just look at the, the outlook for the future. Uh, so first, the, the motivation uh, is why would you want um, GPU offload in WASM? Uh, the main uh, or two kind of very viable options would be something like AI as a service or rendering as a service uh, running on the host, so not through the browser or anything like that. Um, we can kind of get into some of the, the nitty gritty of that a little later with a WASI and N. Uh, but there are also multiple other use cases for web GP, or for GPU offload. Um, but at the moment, uh, with AI being so popular, these are kind of two big ones. Uh, so there are kind of uh, a couple, or well, quite a lot of uh, native APIs already for regular GPU offload. Um, so for uh, visual libraries, you have things like OpenGL, Vulkan, DirectX, DirectX 12. Um, in the scientific world, there's things like uh, OpenCL, SYCL, there's CUDA, there's OpenMP, which has this uh, target pragma. And also in AI, you have things like uh, Triton, TVM, you have AI compilers. Um, so the idea would be that typically uh, it, it could be possible to implement um, WASM support in all of these. It does require a lot of work as well. These are uh, a lot of these are kind of very old kind of uh, legacy libraries with a lot of support, but they're, uh, they're also quite complicated to integrate WASM into because of that. Uh, we actually had some uh, success with uh, OpenMP um, just getting SIMD instructions working, but even then that was uh, quite a lot of work involved. Um, so in terms of actual uh, currently existing offload APIs for WASM, um, two main ones are WASI and N, which we'll get into at, right after this, and uh, WebGPU, uh, which is pretty common, probably well known here already. And uh, there are also a lot of other uh, offload APIs uh, in the ecosystem. Uh, so first we're just going to cover kind of some uh, WebAssembly environments and their, their use cases. Uh, so something we'll see a bit here is just standalone, so you're running uh, your WASM directly uh, on the host, um, typically through something like uh, WASM time or any other uh, WASM runtime. Um, so this has use cases for just standalone desktop apps, uh, it has use cases for cloud applications, and especially uh, in resource-constrained environments where you want to get as much performance as you can out of your application. Um, another one, which is probably the more commonly known one, is just running through the browser. Um, there is also um, running through Node.js, which is a bit more of a niche use case uh, nowadays, but it, it does still have its uses. Uh, so next we're just going to go into WASM offload APIs. Um, so WASI and N um, is a framework for importing um, pre-existing, pre-trained AI models and then compiling that into a WASM file and passing it through a backend. Uh, in the example I'll show in a second, we use OpenVINO as a backend, uh, but you can also use something uh, like uh, TensorFlow, PyTorch, there's a lot of support for it. Um, so why would you want to use WASM for machine learning? Um, well, machine learning is uh, deployed on a lot of devices, a lot of OS, so you really want to have hardware support across environments. Uh, because of that, you want your um, machine learning applications to be as portable as possible. Uh, you're probably thinking, well, if I want to do that, I could probably just use a container. That's an easy solution. Uh, but the thing is, in machine learning applications, you want to have as much performance as possible. And the time spent uh, spinning up a container is just not comparable to using something like WASM. Uh, as well, why would you want to use WASI over just standard uh, pure WASM? Well, WASI just has much, much better performance and has support for things like uh, AVX 512. Um, 
And yeah, in, in machine learning, you obviously want support for a lot of hardware features like SIMD, AVX512 on your CPU, or more preferably, uh, if you have access to them, something like a GPU or a TPU for AI workloads. Uh, so the WASIN API is in Rust. It's very user friendly. Uh, it simply just consists of creating this graph object, which you can then import your pre existing models into. And it's then simply a case of uh, setting your, your input, running a compute function, and receiving your output tensor. Uh, so I'm going to quickly just switch over to a demo. Uh, so this is courtesy of the uh, WASIMEDGE WASINN examples repo. Uh, we have a link to it at the end. It's a very useful repo with a, a lot of uh, very user friendly examples. Uh, so just here I have a Jupyter Notebook open. Um, so this is uh, running on a remote server, and the, the actual application is written in Rust, but uh, I will just quickly um, run uh, the cargo build to actually build the, the Rust and generate an output was as well. And in the, the code here, uh, it's a very simple API. You simply set things like your input and uh, your pre-existing models in both XML and UpIn. Um, next, it's just a case of loading those into a graph. And after that, you simply set your input. Um, you, oh, sorry. Um, and you simply set your input, you run your compute function, and you get an output. Uh, in this example, we just get an output tensor that we write out to a file, but if you want, you could uh, use it for something else, like passing it to, to another model. Um, so here, we are just going to, in WASM Edge, we are going to pass the, the output WASM file that we got, and we are going to also just pass in the pre-existing model and a, an example image. So here, we just have an image of a road, and we have imported a pre-existing model for road segmentation, which is uses for things like uh, autonomous driving and things like that. Uh, so here we just have the, the original image. And next we are going to just visualize the output tensor that we got um, from running WASINN. And here you can see an actual image with the uh, segments of the road uh, clearly marked. Uh, next here, we're just going to do a small bit of uh, data visualization so we can actually form an overlay uh, for that output image. And lastly here, um, we have our, our base Im image, the output tensor that we got from WASINN. And af uh, afterwards, uh, with a bit of data manipulation, we also have a masked image, which is something more akin to what you might see in the camera of an autonomous vehicle. And now I'm going to pass it over to my colleague Atanas to talk about WebGPU. Thank you. Yeah, how many of you are familiar with Web WebGPU? Uh, is this, does this ring a bell? Uh, how many of you did some graphics programming in the past? Right, yeah, WebGPU actually is quite interesting uh, kind of API coming from the um, WWW Consortium. Um, they looked at uh, APIs, uh, basically for graphical APIs and like Vulkan, DirectX, and they, they identified that uh, the web community needs something more generic, which you can run platform independently on many devices, something simpler. Like if you look into modern APIs, um, like Vulkan, they are very complex, uh, but uh, they they also um, yeah. If you uh, are familiar with the history, also there there was a lot of work in the past with uh, WebGL. Uh, this was the predecessor of WebGPU, uh, where there were performance issues. Um, so th this led to the development of a new standard. It's an official standard in from from the W3C. Um, the web GPU and you a lot of br the browsers today support it like if you have Chrome uh, or some other browser they will usually support it but yeah we want that also in in cloud or in data center uh, if you have let's say GPUs uh, remotely we want to use those uh, why is web GPU also so interesting uh, this this diagram shows it actually quite nicely 
if you think about comparing it to the old WebGL standards, um, it, um, we were lacking the, the capability of to do compute shaders. And compute shaders are very important for people like, uh, coming from, from data science community. Um, a lot of the frameworks uh, basically can express their compute through compute shaders. And you see the differences to WebGL basically with blue and red colors in this diagram. Uh, we have also uh, some new stuff, uh, a lot more buffer control. Uh, we have, uh, yeah, um, also uh, better scattering uh, of the work. We have also better kind of capabilities to control uh, how to utilize local memory on GPUs and so on. And yeah, performance is really looking far better than WebGL. So we definitely are interested to use that in, in uh, WebAssembly world. So uh, we started recently uh, in the community uh, a new project, the WASI WebGPU project. Uh, basically, it's uh, based on the component model, which you heard about until now. And we want to provide the WASI, WASI interface uh, for WebGPU, uh, which has very good mapping, or our target is to have very close mapping to the native interface, so that applications in Abor have minimal work to do. Um, and yeah, uh, we want to support rendering compute passes, uh, memory map buffers. Uh, um, so we started actually prototyping and, and writing first kind of runtime, which supports exactly this kind of compute pass, memory map buffers, dispatching. And uh, we started with a backend uh, called WGPU. Uh, this is a Rust backend for implementing WebGPU. Um, yeah, and uh, as next, I want to go through a single example. Uh, we, we managed to implement a simple compute pass uh, through the WASI WebGPU interface. Uh, for people not familiar what is a compute pass, it's displayed on this diagram. So you have a pipeline, uh, we, usually which is associated with a shader. And uh, in the compute pass, you do as a relationship between or so-called bind group between your buffer. The buffer is basically the input of the user and your shader. The shader will do the computation. So we are trying to uh, demonstrate this today. Let's look a little bit through the small comparison. How does it look uh, in terms of writing a WGPU program and writing a WebAssembly WASI WebGPU program? Uh, they are very close. Um, so you see, usually you will go through very well-defined cycle. You need to request a device. Um, uh, the, in in uh, WGPU, you have a request device function with where you pass some options, um, and very similar functions exist basically in, w, uh, in uh, WASI WebGPU uh, API. Um, here to point out, we heard about uh, WIT uh, interface for the component model. All this is described with through the component model interfaces. Um, we have similar functions for creating buffers. This is the next step, uh, basically, when you're doing some sort of application for graphics or for compute shaders things. So you need to create a buffer where you will be storing data or reading data from, from user. Then uh, setting up a pipeline, very similar uh, on left WGPU and on, on the right the WASI uh, WebGPU application you see. Again, we have a programmable stage, uh, more or less the same kind of fields. It's very easy to navigate if you start from WGPU to WASI WebGPU. Then we have the bind group, uh, which associates shader with, uh, with uh, the actual buffer. So again, um, very familiar, a little bit syntax sugar, but yeah, very close to the original code. And dispatching work, um, you have to set the pipeline, uh, tell uh, your device how many work groups you want to spawn. So this is the classical kind of approach if you want to program a compute pass. So th this is what I'm going to <clears throat> demonstrate shortly in a demo now. Um, first, uh, just to point out uh, uh, um, on the screen, uh, you will see I'm running on my local system, and uh, I opened the WGPU website just to show you uh, that actually the browser can run WGPU, and you will see here I wanted to point out it's using my local GPU on the laptop. 
And now we want to avoid that. So we want to basically run a WASI component, which will run remotely. So I will just close that. And uh, here I'm on the remote server where I have uh, basically a top for GPUs, <laughs> which will show some utilization. And I will start a small application, which is my, uh, my kind of WASI web GPU runtime, loading two components, uh, a vector addition component, and a matrix multiplication component. So I start those. They are actually opening uh, some sort of server for me. And th this should be the server. And the first application, what I'm going to demonstrate is Vectorhead. Uh, you see a shader, a compute shader. Usually for web GPU, you write those in uh, WGSL, very close to normal kind of shaders, what you have in graphics. Um, yeah, here we will try to do vector addition for uh, a vector with relatively a lot of elements, 2 million elements, and we set a workgroup size of 256 threads. Uh, so we execute do that, and we do one iteration. We just do one addition. Right, you saw a little bit load, but not too much. GPU, my local GPU should remain untouched. <laughs> Result is valid. I do small comparison, basically, to the CPU implementation. Now let's pump up the iterations. Let's do 1,000. Uh, make it more interesting. Uh, so we should see a little bit more happening. You see my remote GPU got something to compute. So it's still not, not too much. Uh, so we can play with that further. So we can also adjust the workgroup size. Um, the other example is matrix multiplication. Um, so I have uh, 16 by 16 matrices where multiplying with a group group work group size of four by four. Um, right? So again, normal compute shader code. Uh, I execute that. It's really quick. A little bit load on the integrated graphics. The remote machine which I'm running uh, on, on the server side is again with some integrated graphics, basically Intel GPU. Um, right, so you see, really easy to use, and yeah, so this, this is first kind of success story for WASI Web GPU. Um, right, this was the same application as uh, uh, displayed here. Okay, uh, that's nice, and, and so uh, we, we saw some nice pictures, but maybe it's useful also for AI. Uh, why this can be interesting? Um, so uh, we, we, we covered a little bit the WASI and N side that we have ONNX uh, runtime support, OpenVINO support, TensorFlow. Uh, with WebGPU also looks quite, quite promising. So there are a lot of frameworks which are already enabled for WebGPU. Uh, for example, TensorFlow GS, uh, ONNX runtime also. What does it mean enabled for WebGPU? They provide basically compute shaders similar to what I executed, but not for matrix multiplication, but for the actual AI uh, workloads. And just to give you an example with something more challenging, um, uh, there is a, a, a framework which is supporting also WebGPU uh, called Apache TVM. Uh, Apache TVM is a graph compiler. You can uh, basically provide your graph and Apache TVM will get this representation, uh, this kind of uh, AI representation of the graph and try to map it to your device. Uh, this is a very difficult problem in terms of optimization as if you are trying to develop a component which is platform independent, uh, there are a lot of combinations how, how you can optimize the code. And Apache TVM basically implements some sort of stochastic search, uh, generating optimized kernels for, for the dedicated device. So that, that's one potential kind of benefit if you take WebGPU. Uh, in the future, you might be able to run Apache TVM in, in, as a WASI module. So a little bit outlook, and then we will finish with questions. Um, so there were some, some other APIs which uh, are available in the native community, as we heard, which we did not look uh, if they are suitable for enabling uh, for, for uh, uh, GPU offload. One example is the OpenMP offload. Uh, this comes 
naturally from, from C++ C community, um, also usable for Fortran, where you have pragmas and uh, you can parallelize loop. Um, uh, usually you can also offload the loop calculation on the GPU. This might have potential drawbacks uh, because there is a lot of pointers flying around, so security might be impacted in, if, if we look into enabling such kind of approach. The other very interesting uh, kind of project, which is currently uh, being uh, discussed in, in the uh, W3C consortium is the WebNN interface. Um, so a web interface for neural networks, where you uh, don't, uh, if you uh, think about web GPU is more close to actual graphics. Uh, but WebNN is really an interface which is for the future looking uh, to be mapped better to, to neural networks. Yeah, and yeah, to summarize uh, the talk today, uh, th those are our sources. Uh, so you can find um, all, all details about WASINN and the WASI Web GPU project um, if you look into the references of our presentation. Uh, we will push also the examples uh, on the WASI Web GPU uh, project as a branch so that you can uh, play with that. Um, and yeah, please reach out to us. We have also, uh, we are on the Intel boot where we'll be showing also this technology there. And more sources if you're really hungry for information. There is a lot of uh, out there. <laughs> Thank you. And yeah, if you want to give us some video. That was a phenomenal talk. I think um, WebGPU is pretty hot. Uh, how about questions? Yeah, you got one? Yeah, I knew you'd have one. You got hungry eyes over here. So uh, you have a link to Mendy Berger's uh, proposal for the, uh, you can think about, okay. You had a link on a couple of screenshots to Mendy Berger's proposal to the, um, uh, WASI Web GPU interface. Is there any interested from interest from the Intel side to contribute to that? Add some effort to because I know that it's uh, like a, a part of the code base that's kind of in need of. I'm this. personally working on with with Mandy on that okay. uh, basically, and me and Aaron are are working together with with Mandy to to contribute on the WASI Web GPU. We will start by trying to uh, to merge our compute pipeline, basically the compute pass coverage. Um, but yeah, definitely there. It's very interesting for Intel the the whole WASI Web GPU effort. That's really good. Hey, thanks. Uh, there are questions around the room. If not, I've got a couple for you. Okay. I really love um, how uh, your demo started with a standard that was proposed for browsers in the web, but most of your demos were, you know, general purpose. Um, is web GPU, uh, does it have a real potential to be this sort of, you know, universal ML platform or API that people can build on top of? Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's very, it has big potential because, um, in one of the pictures, we showed that we, uh, WebGPU has the benefit that it's platform independent. So it, it can detect, if you run it on a server, let's say with Windows, it can detect that you have DirectX 12. Um, if you're running on Mac, it will detect another kind of API, another backend. Um, that, that I see as a big benefit. So basically, usually in, in the ecosystem, you might have very heterogeneous uh, kind of platforms. Um, and definitely web GPU uh, opens the doors for, for deploying your GPU applications on heterogeneous uh, um, platforms with decent performance. Um, so like performance is being shown to be better than WebGL. Um, and yeah, the, the, integ the integration with compute shader capabilities is really great for other uh, communities outside of graphics, like the AI world. I think they are really interested to use that. They are also, um, it, it, for their formats, like uh, usually graphics, they, they compute most of the stuff in, in floating point 32 bit. Uh, but yeah, web, web GPU is being extended with 16 bit, most probably more stuff will come in, which, which will make it more widely usable. Okay, thank you so much. Um, any other questions? 
All right, please join me in a huge round of applause.